We are inside the barrel room here at Robert Bialy Vineyards, and we're with uh, Steve Hall, winemaker, and we're going to taste a little wine right now. So, Steve, what, what did you pour here for starters? Well, we poured the uh, Zinfandel from St. Helena. It's the craft uh, vineyard, the old craft vineyard. It's Bill and Margie Hart's uh, uh, vineyard that we make into a wine. It's a selection of uh, mostly Zinfandel. We put in a little bit of Petit Syrah for a co-fermentation just to texture it a bit. And so that's the vineyard that we were just visiting a little bit ago. Right, and this is the 2009 vintage. Uh, so this is the, uh, I guess we're on the 4th of November. Uh, so this was, uh, you know, two, two years ago, basically. And uh, so we're finally getting to enjoy it. It's been released. And uh, unlike a lot of Zinfandels, it's a, a little bit darker uh, because of the Petit Syrah that's uh, also co-fermented in it. And when you say co-fermentation, just for those that are not sure what that term means, describe it, please. It's a, uh, similar to a vineyard blend. Uh, in this case, it is a vineyard blend, uh, but we're only using part of the Petit Syrah and then throwing it into the Zinfandel at about maybe 3 to 5 percent uh, Petit Syrah into the Zin, just to, uh, to bring a little bit more depth and, and, uh, and nuance and, and uh, just sort of a... Uh, just a special flavor that we think uh, is, uh, speaks about what the vineyard is. Okay. Dare I ask you how 2009 was as a harvest? 2009 was almost as easy as the 2007 harvest. Uh, just about everything that was pulled off in those two vintages really represents what we think uh, the vineyard potential is. There wasn't a lot of monkeying around to do. Uh, it was just a matter of uh, careful blending. Uh, and, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. Everything's there. <laughs> right, okay. Let's see what the wine tastes like. Well, you know, the first thing I get, there's two main things that come out for me when I first taste this wine, is balance and fruit. And, and the tannins are quite soft, I think, at this point. Um, what's your thinking about what we just tasted? The, um, there is a textural... Uh, uh, nuance to it that uh, uh, that we're getting from the Petit Syrah that uh, uh, if you were tasting something that was more of a pure zin, it would, it would be a bit softer. The, uh, uh, I think the aromas, uh, the deep aromas are uh, what you find in just about anything you pull out of uh, uh, St. Helena. So mm -hmm. I'd say this is a pretty representative of what we like the vineyard to bring. Uh, it, it does have a lot of uh, fruit aroma coming off of it, and uh, this is perhaps not quite as textural as, uh, in terms of the tannins and, uh, as some of the uh, vintages that we've had. Okay. In fact, on, on second tasting, I can see that there's still a slight rough edge to the tannins to, to this wine. If, if someone had never tasted Robert Bialy Vineyard's wine, and you had to, in a very short way, to describe the style of what you make here, how would you describe it? Well, we've got two different uh, ideas about the wines that we make. We make one that's sort of a traditional uh, southern Napa, uh, which is a cooler part of Napa with a slightly uh, more uh, clay loam soil. So it winds up being fatter, uh, softer, uh, and deeper in texture. And a classic example is the, the black chicken that we make. And then as we go to the vineyard designates, like uh, the Old Craft or Monterosso or a few of these others that we have, uh, you get uh, smaller uh, uh, grabs of very specific uh, vineyards, and, and they can really be quite distinct. So it's hard to compare the uh, uh, designates as a Robert Bialy style because they're really all over the board. The vineyards speak to them. But I would say, as we're looking at... Uh, most of our uh, wines, because we do a punch-down fermentation, we get the softness of the tannins, the full array of fruit, and the, the style of Bialy is really, you know, speaking to the uh, careful vineyard selection and working with the uh, vineyard owners or our own fruit, and then the really soft, nuanced uh, fermentation. Right, so that's it. Okay. You know, this is interesting, but one of the things we didn't do in, in sitting down is having a dump bucket. So are we going to have to just, you know, finish drinking this wine so that we can taste the other one? 
No, we're, we're actually going to just toss it over towards that. Uh, okay. So, so well, excuse us as we disappear for a little bit, as we do it the way they do it at the winery. Oh, <laughs> missed. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're back. Wonderful. <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. No, that's okay. Uh, so uh, Jose's wife uh, was wearing white shoes. Now she's wearing pink shoes. <laughs> All right. And, and this next wine is what? This is a uh, Petit Syrah. This is our Royal Punisher, uh, part of the craft. Oh, the infamous Royal yeah. Punisher. Well, it's not that, I hope. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and so uh, when we go to uh, the uh, uh, PS I Love You uh, events, uh, like uh, Dark and Delicious, uh, on Alameda Island. Uh, this is one of our favorite wines. Uh, the Hart Vineyard that we were at uh, just a couple of minutes ago on a uh, cold day in November, some of the uh, Petit Syrah vines become one of the main styling points of, uh, of the uh, Royal Punisher. There's a uh, tension in the tan and it's kind of a masculine uh, uh, tension, uh, it's angular, uh, and it uh, helps counterbalance some of the softer uh, petite Syrahs that we get from Rutherford. So, so uh, the Punisher is sort of a grab from Calistoga, St. Helena, Rutherford, and then down over by Aldo's and Clementina's Vineyard, some of the petite Syrah vines we have there. This wonderful mix we make into a, a balanced, uh, uh, softer than you would expect uh, wine from Petit Syrah uh, that is uh, fairly uh, uh, you know, available for drinking in terms of easy to drink early. Uh, goes about a year and a half in barrel, gets soft enough so that uh, by the time we bottle it, it's absolutely ready to drink and we, we do just that. We, we drink it. Tell us about the name. Uh, our, uh, our marketing genius, Dave Pramick, uh, is a Scrabble uh, enthusiast, and he took Syrah and Pellerson, those are the two parent grapes that uh, I guess Carol Meredith had uh, identified as the Petit Syrah, also known as the Derive grape, as the parents, and he came up with a couple of variations, but the uh, one that we could use is Royal Punishers, and uh, it's a uh, it's, Really, uh, it's a 100% Petit Syrah that, uh, that we make every year. And the nuance and the balance that we get and the softness uh, always comes just uh, from playing with the different vineyards and, and their expression. Right. Well, let's see what we have here for, for taste. Hmm. That is uh, juicy. Um, and... and it's funny because you say this is a blend of a variety of vineyards. Yeah. And so it kind of changes each year depending on what comes in from the different vineyards? Well, the flavor and structure actually don't change. Uh, some years a uh, vineyard may have less or more of its kind of basic ingredient. And as we go around to the different vineyards, the art of blending is just to go back to what we always see every year as uh, the softness uh, uh, that a royal punisher has and the depth of fruit. Right. And so, uh, if you were to taste vintages of punishers, you wouldn't see a lot of uh, variation. Uh, mm -hmm. You would you would still see the snap of how they take on the petite So, in a sense, you have a profile for the royal punisher that exactly. you're looking for. Exactly. And, and, and as you construct the wine, you're trying to achieve that, that profile. Yeah, and, the, it's and, a and the vintage? Uh, we're one? looking at a 2009. As okay. well, and so this was uh, just bottled and uh, uh, back in uh, June, and uh, and finally you got some uh, bare, uh, bottle age, and it's uh, softening up enough to uh, to really uh, you know be quite drinkable. And tell us what you're tasting in this today, as as we are, are tasting. I get a lot of the. Uh, I, you know, I think dark and delicious really does, <laughs> does describe it. Right. I, I, you get a lot of uh, dark toned fruit. Uh, you get a lot of the uh, umami kind of flavors, you know, these wonderful uh, uh, flavors that come uh, to, to mind when you uh, uh, can't quite pin down a fruit flavor or an earth flavor. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not off-putting. It's very approachable and it, it, to me it compels. I think there's a 
there's a point where uh, as this would uh, breathe a bit and open up, uh, you'd be following the bottle around. You know, you drink your glass, you pour more, and then at some point the bottle would be empty. And I think that's also another feature of a Bialy wine is there's sort of this compulsion to uh, follow the bottle and, and uh, make sure that your friends aren't drinking it. Right. You know, Robert Bialy Vineyards is, is, is very well known for its Zinfandels and its Petit Syrahs, and I, I'd like to you to speak a little bit about those grapes and as a winemaker, what you find exciting about them and, and what, you know, what characteristics do they have that excites you? Well, you know, winemaking, it has just been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, and we have a, a, a world in Napa and Sonoma itself that uh, has been going on for about 150 years. Uh, over uh, the years, about 120, 130 years ago, these uh, varieties started showing up and were widely planted well before there was really any thought of a, a Cabernet vine uh, going anywhere in, in Napa Valley, uh, or Chardonnay for that matter. So as, uh, as you know, a sort of a heritage grape, uh, it was natural for, uh, for us to uh, gravitate towards that because of the uh, original start of Robert Bialy uh, Vineyards was with uh, these old head train vines that Bob had grown up with and uh, his friend uh, Dave had, had played in and, uh, and, and the uh, softer nuanced wines you get from these varieties are, are quite different from just a, a pure planting of Cabernet or something like that. You know, I think there's a lot more interest. So we, uh, we like to consider those grapes really sort of our heritage and it's up to us to also uncover flavors that vineyards have once we are able to carefully nurture the vineyards back to health if they're an old vineyard. Right. To consider those flavors as sort of a, a unique aspects, you know, as personalities in their own right, and uh, that's, that's what we look for. Right. Wonderful. Steve, thank you so much for your time today, and cheers. Thanks, Jose. All right. Thank you.